All right, it is April here in Washington State, and bass is on the brain, but not just here in Washington, all across the country. We got one problem here in Washington State. Those bass are in shallow water, and they're not quite looking up. So today, we're going to tie a fly to solve that problem and get those bass to eat. All right, in the vise, we have an Arex NS122, size number 10. So for me, when I'm looking for a solution for a problem on the water, I stick to what I know. And you're going to see some similarities in what you know, I know very well throughout this pattern. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay some thread wraps down and trim off that tag end. We got a few materials here today that you might already have, but if not, I'm going to go over each one individually. So we have a just a grizzly hen here. We're going to just tie this in at the very tip and work from here. So today we are tying a baby crayfish or juvenile crayfish. We have them here in our lakes and rivers throughout the Pacific Northwest and you do too no matter where you're at tying for this species likely. So we're going to bring this to life in a fashion that I think is quite interesting. So we're going to start wrapping this feather. Like I said in the intro, we're specifically here, we're going to be targeting these fish when they're in shallow water. So we got out, we fished, we found these fish, and they're in very shallow water. And there's a huge overlay of weeds underneath them. And the problem with the jig oriented flies that all of you guys know, I love to fish is they go straight into the weeds and out of the strike zone. So the strike zone is very important no matter what fish you're fishing for. And we know that all too well by years and years of fishing Puget Sound. So we've been faced with this problem before. It's not a unique problem. And it's one that we feel very comfortable solving. And we've solved it many times with flies just like this. So we don't want to add a lot of weight. So we're not going to do a crazy number of wraps of feathers. And throughout the fly, we're not going to do a crazy amount of materials no matter what we're using. So the next thing we're going to do, couldn't be a spawn video without a bunch of spawn products. So we got some spawn semi seal and sand dab. So we're going to line these fibers up. This is going to be that front section of the craw. So again, we don't want a lot, but we want them to protrude out past the hen feathers there. So, and we're working in this front section here. We don't we don't want to have it creep back, keep that maintained, and we can trim this off here. I'm going to add some more to that tail section in a bit, but not right this second. Alrighty. So these crawfish are really dark in color when they're first uh, at this juvenile stage here locally. So we're going to be replicating that. But the one color that they do have when inspecting um, each of them in the rivers or in the water is they do have some orange to them, but only on the claws. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take some rubber legs here from Hairline, and they are black barred orange. And we're going to tie those on, and that's going to give that little trigger of color and really add to it. We're going to get that to wrap around. And we're going just off that bend of the hook, you can see. And it's going to be money. We want one on each side, facing down. And I like to trim them with just a teeny bit of orange showing past a black barring. So just gives that little look and feel there of an actual claw on this little crawfish. All right, next element. We're moving right along in this pattern. And pretty soon it'll probably start to look familiar has a problem or is a solution for a problem that we faced previously in Puget Sound. Okay, so we got some easy shrimp eyes here. These are the extra small. Really, really cool product. If you haven't seen these, you're likely going to start seeing them more and more. They just got picked up from distribution for hairline. But the good news is we've been tying with them for years and years. So hopefully you guys continue to revert back to content and see what we've been doing with this awesome product. So we're going to 
throw that down. It has the tab. We're going to keep the tab right on top. And I don't want the eyes to spread out too much. They're kind of close together on some of these guys. So we're going to keep it that way. And you do that by tying farther out uh, where the two eyes protrude from the tab. And if you tie it out into it, it's going to push those eyes together. So we'll tie that in. And so far, so good. Next thing we're going to do, we got some bucktail. And we are going to give this two little antennae. And just two. We're making this specific when it comes to a few of these elements. And got a nice squiggly looking fiber on the bucktail here, which is great. I don't want this completely straight one. I want them to look like they're moving all over the place in the in the water. And just kind of manipulate those a little bit here and there. There we go. And we can trim that off. Sweet. So foundation is kind of set for this. If it looks like a shrimp, that's because it has some of the same basis for success that we've we've brought a life on the vise before, but we're using a similar solution. Like I said earlier, if you've solved problems, stick with what you know and expand from there. That's what I like to do. Might not be the best for everybody, but it's helpful for me. And again, we continue to find solutions like this one. And this is how we did it. So I'm gonna turn this over just for a second and add just a tiny bit more sand dab underneath. just fold that up a little bit and trim there. Okie dokie. Alright. And back. Alrighty. So this is starting to look like a baby craw to me. And it's going to not have a lot of weight. It's going to sit down just in that water column and solve that solution that we've been working for with those shallow water bass in the weeds. They're not on beds yet, but this is going to do the trick just fine. And also, it'll be a great pattern for those of you that like to fish in the river um, as well. So the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to take some vinyl rib, and I'm just going to tie it in on the side. And work it back to where all those materials come together. That's good to go. And then I am going to take some thin skin that I have pre-cut. This is thin skin and brown, so I've cut it into a little crawfish shape there. And I really just want that front portion of it to stick out. So you can trim this back. You don't need it to be long. You're not. We're not going to use a full shell-like feature for this fly. Um, so right there will do it. And Yahtzee. Looking pretty good if you ask me. So now we're going to work our thread all the way up to the eye. So we don't have too many elements left on this pattern, but it's all going to come to life and hopefully it's all making sense in how we are solving this problem. For catching those pesky bass in that shallow water where there's loads of weeds, but they're not quite looking up. So we're going to dub our thread here. On a side note, this is a phenomenal cutthroat pattern here if you're looking to add another one to your arsenal. But that's not our intended species today. So we're just dubbing our thread and we're working it back towards that shell that we just added a second ago. We're going to get some more semi seal on there. This is again this is the spawn semi seal sand dab. Such a good color. And continue to work that up. There we go. All right, now I'm going to get a really thin noodle on the way back. I don't want to add too much to these. These crawfish are small, and 
And again, I don't want it to get too heavy. I want it to be just right. So we're going there. And that'll do it. All right, so we got our vinyl ribs. So th these crawfish do have some segmentation to them. And we want to have that show through in this pattern. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and see if we can get it to turn. Yeah, I tied it in a little wonky, but that's okay. I just need to get it to turn on that first wrap, and then we'll be good to go. Alrighty. We're going to work our way through and bring that down. So that's going to just give it a little body segmentation. That's all we're looking for. Hopefully you can see that on your side. And we will trim that out. What we're going to do now, just come in, clean that up, give it a nice clean thread finish. And we will whip finish. So we're pretty much done here. We're going to get a little picky about some things here in a second. So whip finish, I'll throw one more in where we are fishing for bass. They're going to chew this thing up. So we got some pretty fancy Stompho tools these days, but what we're going to do, we got a Stompho bodkin, and I'm going to come in and I'm just going to pick out the underneath side of this pattern. Just give it a little more profile here. Do this before you add the head cement, in my opinion. It's going to work a little better, or do it after the head cement dries. We're just getting some of those trapped fibers out, on specifically on the bottom side. We don't need to do this on the top. And there we go. That'll a little more of it will come loose here as I play with this, but in the sake of keeping you guys engaged, we're going to move on to the last and final element. We got some loon hardhead cement here. We are going to take a little dab of that and just clean up this fly. We really hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have that same issue that we got here, we hope this adds to it. Again, this is a pattern that's going to sink below the surface, but not sink too fast and too deep. And it'll coax those bass into eating in this early season here in Western Washington. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, hit like, hit subscribe, and we will see you guys next time.